John 1 12 but as many as received him to them as many as received him to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name so as many as received him to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name so here explain what believing mean some people think believing is just believing in a head it's not just believing in a head it's receiving him receiving him as our Savior and as our Lord so receive Jesus into our life receive Jesus into our home so when we receive Jesus then he gave us the right to become children of God so everyone who believe in him who trust in Jesus and receive him as our Savior and as our Lord then we have the right to become children of God so every person who has a living relationship with God are the children of God every single person who has a living relationship of trusting in Jesus as their Savior the living relationship with God will also produce good works the living relationship will produce good works and these people are called children of God so we have the confidence we are the children of God I have met some people they deny that everyone who believe and follow Jesus are the children of God and uh, I hope we all know that when we have trust in him and have a living relationship with him when we have a living relationship with him that means we'll we'll let him be our Lord and obey him then we become the children of God believing in Jesus name is receiving him is letting him to come into our life let him be our Lord and master receiving Jesus as Savior and master of our life so receiving him as our Savior and as our master and we are saved by grace through faith Romans 10 10 for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved so when we believe in Jesus it's our heart that believe then we are justified that is in a heart that we believe then with our mouth that you can profess your faith and are saved so when we believe it's not just in our heart it's also in our mouth that means it's external when we are safe when we believe in Jesus then we have Jesus in our heart but this faith will <coughs> have result have fruits then we will profess with our mouth and also our life would profess uh, the life of Jesus our life with will have joy and peace and love and care for people our life would show the life of God will show the fruit of salvation so so this verse talk about that when people believe in the heart and then they show their life then they are saved so when we are when we believe in our heart then we are justified we are called righteous and then when we live out this faith when we live out this faith then we have salve, uh, then 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 we are um, saved then when we live out this faith then the f uh, that means God is living through us then we are saved so faith is not just with our heart okay when we profess our faith profess our faith with our mouth we are saved so faith is not just with our heart but also with our mouth and action the mouth represents action our faith from our heart will bear fruit externally and we will be saved from eternal damnation when we trust in Jesus and that our faith will live uh, will show in our life okay now we come to the fruit of salvation when a person is saved what are the fruits of salvation the Bible has talked about that from diff different Bible verses I found that the Bible has listed at least six fruits of salvation at least 
okay uh, the first one is now you can see in red uh, and in pink uh, in uh, purple here but first is related to salvation related to salvation would be repentance and trust uh, of faith or faith so when we uh, are saved we repent and trust in Jesus as our Savior so we continue to do this and then relationship with God we have a close relationship with God and love God and related to good works, we obey Him and serve Him. So these are the six necessary fruits of salvation that the, uh, the Bible has listed that uh, people who don't have this, their faith has problem. Now we are not saved by these fruits, we are saved by faith. But when we have real faith, then we have this fruit. First is to continue to repent of our sins and turn away from our sins. It's not just repentance, but to turn away from the sins. When we hate sin, and then we turn away from the sins. And continue to trust in Jesus as Savior and Master. So this is faith, believing in Jesus. I use the word trust, uh, which is a, a clearer word that explains the biblical term belief. The biblical term belief is not just believing in the head. So do you believe there is America? Do you believe that America is real? You believe that. It doesn't change your life. When you trust, you trust someone. For instance, you trust your father, your mother, your spouse. You trust, you trust that your, father will, your parents will bring you food. You trust your spouse will be faithful to you. Uh, so this is trust. We have trusting relationship with people. And we trust our house that it won't fall upon us. We trust our bed that when we lie on the bed, it will not collapse. So we trust on a chair. When we sit on a chair, the chair will not collapse. So using this term is better. That we trust in Jesus. That we hold on to Him. We know that He can give us salvation. So we trust in Jesus as our Savior and Master. This is a continual faith. It's not just, some people say, once safe, always safe. Not just one time, but it's a continual faith in God. And then relationship. Have a close relationship with God. It's a daily relationship. And then love God with all our heart. That with all our heart, all our mind, all our soul, all our strength, that we love God. And then related to good works, that we'll obey Him, especially the Great Commission, and then we serve God. And serve God includes glorifying God and blessing people in Jesus in daily life and in ministry. It's not just in ministry, but in daily life when we help people, when we glorify God and tell people how God is wonderful, or when we are by, by ourselves, when we are by ourselves, we praise God. God, you're so wonderful. I love you. I adore you. I, I, I really appreciate you. This is also serving God, that when we glorify God, by ourselves that we glorify God and then we tell people about the goodness of God to glorify God and bless people and also ministry when we do evangelism and uh, raise up people's spiritual life and build up the church and in different ministry and all ministries should be connected to the Great Commission to help people believe in Jesus and to obey and follow Jesus that uh, for instance leading praise and worship it's not just praise and worship. It's not just showing some music. It's leading people to worship God, to love God. And then for non-Christians come in, they would enjoy the worship and they might believe in Jesus because of the worship. And then for Christians, it will help people to build up a close relationship with God. And when we welcome people, we welcome people with joy and love and care. And then we help people to follow Jesus. Uh, when we set up the chairs in the church, we want people to enjoy coming to worship God. So whatever we do, it should be related to uh, the Great Commission to preach the gospel and also to build up the spiritual life of people, to help people to obey uh, and to serve God. Okay, and then hear about sins. So we repent, continue to repent of our sins. Now, just now we already talked about trust in Jesus as our Savior. So here is, oh, I'm sorry, this is uh, the, still the first point. It trust, continue to repent of our sins and turn away, turn away from our sins. John 5, 14. 
So Jesus says here, stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. To the man who was healed of 38 years of sickness, and Jesus said, stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. So we need to understand every time we sin, every time we have lust or anger or stealing or greed or uh, hurting people, any kind of sin, things, worst thing can happen to us. Now for this sick man, it could mean sickness coming back. It could mean ruining his family, ruining his life and his future. And for us too, it can ruin everything. Sins can ruin the relationship with people and with God and our future and our reputation. Even a person who has done a lot of good things, when he has sinned, it can, he can ruin his whole ministry. Galatians 6, 8 For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap destruction, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. So when we sow to our flesh, here means flesh means sinful nature. So when we follow our sinful nature, will of the flesh will from the flesh reap destruction when we follow our sinful nature when we follow follow our greed our lust our anger our uh, selfishness all these sins will reap destruction any kind of sin any any small sin if we let the sin control us it will bring destruction but he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life so we follow the Holy Spirit, we'll, we'll have everlasting life. So when people sow to the flesh, to the sinful nature, destruction can come to Him. When we understand this, then we don't want to sin. Whenever any sinful thought comes, whenever we have any anger with someone, we say, this will destroy me. So I repent and pray to God for strength and I choose to obey. I choose to be nice to Him, even though it seems unfair. But when we are nice to Him, God will give us more blessings. So it, it, it really is worthy. It's worthy to be nice to people. If we hate people and don't forgive them, we reap the destruction. More things, bad things will happen to us. So we, whenever we have the heart of despising people, we say this will destroy us. Even when this person is not a good person, he has sinned a lot, he continued to come to church and he still continues sin and we might have despised for the person and God doesn't like that. So when we f find that we have despised for the, for the person immediately we say that the despise of the person will bring destruction. I want to love and care and respect this person even though this person is weak and he continues sin. I still want to bless him and help him and be nice to him and then God is happy with me. God is not happy with someone who just, you know, who dislike the people they help. So whenever we notice any, any sins in us, for instance, any lust in us, when we look at a woman and have lust, in, in, immediately we'll say, this will bring destruction. I don't want to look at a woman. I don't want to have lust. I want to think about the holiness of God. And I realize that the lust can destroy my life. So whenever we have any sin, we know that it can destroy my life. And I have these five steps to victory, which you might have heard. I hope you commit this to your memory. First is aware, aware that we are sinning or we have negative thoughts or uh, negative feelings. And then second is destructive. Any negative things is destructive. Three, what does the Bible say? What does the Bible tell me to do? And then four, pray to repent and ask God for strength. So we pray to ask God to forgive us and give us strength. Five, choose to obey. So I hope you remember this. Aware, destructive, Bible, pray, obey. So when we have lust, we are aware of the lust immediately. Now if a person is leading worship in a church, he's serving the church, he's teaching in a church, and then he sees a beautiful woman and he thinks about the woman while he's teaching. Then he's teaching in vain. God is not pleased with his life. So when he noticed that, he wants to say this is destructive when he has lust. It's destructive. No, aware. He is aware that he has the lust 
and then he's is destructive and then three what does the Bible say the Bible say lust for woman already is adultery and then pray for forgiveness please forgive me for the lust and please help give me strength and number five choose to obey I choose not to think about the woman I choose to respect the woman and not to have lust on her and for some people they choose to turn away from the woman and not to look at a woman now looking at a woman doesn't necessarily mean lust we have to look at people all the time when we look at them we respect them as a holy person that person is important we look at her but we look at her with respect and honor without lust now if a person cannot look at a woman without lust then he don't then he should not look at a woman but as pastors we have to look at men and women but we want to take away all the lust no matter how beautiful the woman is we want to look at a woman and respect the woman and honor the woman and and not to have any kind of lust so we can separate uh, that uh, separate the lust so whenever we notice we have any kind of greed for, in for instance greed for the money I'm aware there is destructive destructiveness and then what does the Bible say you know greed is like uh, worshipping idols and then pray for forgiveness and strength and I choose not to greed God will give me what I need I don't have the greed for more he will give me what I need now for some people they have depression they they are unhappy about themselves they are unhappy about the situation they feel very unhappy that is also sin because sadness comes from lack of trusting God depression comes from lack of trusting God and lack of a close relationship with God and then he is aware he is depressed and then uh, it's destructive because he will take away his joy and then what does the Bible say rejoice in the Lord look at the good things of God then we have joy and then pray for forgiveness and strength and then number five I choose to praise God so I have more joy so I choose to think about the good things of God so I have more joy I choose to enjoy God so I have more joy I choose different ways to think of the good things of God I enjoy God I like God God is so wonderful and I choose to build up my joy so it's important that we want to build up our joy not by forcing ourselves but by thinking about the goodness of God by thinking about the grace of God God is so good I can rejoice in him I can enjoy him I can like him I can enjoy life I can like myself too you know we can like ourselves because the Bible says love yourself as your neighbors okay and then so Ephesians 4 26 in your anger do not sin do not let the Sun go down while you are still angry and do not give the devil a foothold so what does giving the devil a foothold means it means that we give in to sin so when we in your anger do not sin do not let the Sun go down while you're still angry so Paul was talking about sin and then he said don't give the devil a foothold so giving a devil a foothold is letting sin control us when we sin then we are giving the devil a foothold a foothold is like this it's like you climb on a cliff and then there is a place you can put your foot on that is a foothold a place you can step on so you give the devil a foothold that he can step into your life so we don't want to do that so verse 26 talk about not to sin in our anger verse 27 talk about not giving the devil a foothold so sinning is one way to give the devil a foothold John 10:10, 10, 10, the thief does, does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy the greatest thief is the devil the thief is the devil the greatest thief now many people are thieves also but the greatest thief is the devil so giving a foothold to the devil will let him come to steal kill and destroy he will steal everything we have we'll st he will steal our family steal our joy 
still our reputation and our ministry, our future, our possession. He will steal everything. He will kill us if we let Him control us. And He will destroy everything we have. He will destroy the church. Many churches are destroyed because of the sins of the people. Galatians 5.19 Now the works. Now here I'm, I'm using passages to help us understand the destructiveness of sins. So I hope that we all become aware and when we read the Bible, we notice how the Bible talks about the destructiveness of sin. But when we talk about the destructiveness of sin, we don't want to be yelling at people, you're sinning like this, you are useless. We want to say to them, your life is wonderful and God loves you. God cares about you. Your life is precious. And God wants to give good things to you. God wants to bless your whole life. If you sin, Satan will steal from your life. So don't sin. Now, so we want to motivate people with the grace of God. But we can still remind people of the destructiveness of sins. We can still remind people that when we sin, we are letting, giving the devil a foothold and then we can let st Satan steal from us and then we can lose our joy, our strength, our ministry, our life and our eternal life. So we can warn people. When people continue to sin, we can say, you can lose your salvation. Do you know there's a danger? You can lose your salvation. So we, we need to um, motivate people with the grace of God, the love of God. But we still need to remind people of the destructive, destructiveness of sins. For Christians, I would say 90% or 95% or 99% of the motivation should come from the grace and the love of God. And a very small percent should be coming from the, the fear of the punishment and the consequence of sins. We still need to remind ourselves. But when I serve God, I don't think of, if I don't serve God, I'll go to hell. I don't motivate myself like that. We, mo I, we motivate ourselves with saying, God loves me, God cares about me, and when I serve God, He honors me, and He, he and then all the food, you know, first I bless these people, and these people are blessed, and then God bless me also, and, and I'm happy to bless people. So that should be the, the positive motivation of people to serve God. Now some people have the biggest motivation to serve God is to make the church grow. Now that is one one goal, but that should not be in a motivation. Some people say, my church has to grow, has to grow, I have to work hard. Many people say, I have to work hard and f push people to work hard, work hard so the church will grow. They want to, the church will grow so the church will look good and they will look good because they have a church that grows a lot. Now that is not a good motivation because what happens is then he has a lot of pressure to make the church grow. And when the church doesn't grow, he has pressure and he will pressure the people. When people are pressured, they don't have the joy of the Lord. It's better that people live in the joy of the Lord and enjoy God. God is so wonderful. God is so good. God cares about me. God is blessing me and I'm happy to bless people. When I, and when I bless people, God is happy with me. I'm happy to serve God. When people serve God like that, they have joy and people want to go to that church. People want to go to church when the pastor is happy and joyful and free and energetic. And at the same time is motivated by love. I'm not motivated by guilt or just by growth. Some churches, they push people to grow, to grow, to grow. People don't grow by pushing them to grow. People grow when they see how wonderful God is. It's always connected to the goodness of God. So I hope that we are motivated by the goodness of God, but we still at the same time we realize the destructiveness of sin. I will remind, I will remind myself of the destructiveness of sin, but that's not what I remind myself all the time. I remind myself all the time of the goodness of God and His forgiveness and His grace and His blessings. Okay, now Galatians 5.19 is a verse that, that it, it is a warning. 
Now the works of this flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, uh, reveries, reveries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such thing will not inherit the kingdom of God. So any kind of sin, when we commit, when we commit, any kind of sin when we commit, if we don't repent, we continue in the sin, hatred or uh, uncleanness, fornication, adultery, uh, selfish ambition, wrath, jealousy, dissensions, division of the people, any kind of sins. If we continue to sin without repentance, it can bring eternal damnation. And those people who practice this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Because Christians do have selfishness. Christians do have uncleanness, fornication, idol idolatry, jealousy, uh, division. Christians have those too. So they need to repent whenever we notice any kind of sin. So this is a heavy warning that people who practice this, they continue to live in this without repentance, will not inherit the kingdom of God. Repentance and forgiveness is the way to forgive us of these sins. It doesn't mean that these sins means nothing. These sins are still serious. So when someone is angry with someone, he asks God to forgive us, forgive him. It doesn't cancel the anger. This anger still have a consequence. It can ruin the relationship. But when we forgive, uh, when we ask God to forgive us, then God forgives us and we can restore the relationship with God. And then we want to restore the relationship with people. But it doesn't take away all the consequences of the sin. For instance, if someone has, a com has committed adultery or hatred for his wife, it will ruin his marriage. Even though he asked God to forgive him, God will forgive him. But his relationship with the wife will be ruined. Now, if we try to restore it, the marriage might be restored, but it will not be the same as before. There's always a memory of what has happened. So we, do, we want to really watch out for any kind of sins that creep into our life. And we want to say, I want to be careful not to sin. And because if we continue to sin, it can destroy my life. And if I sin and ask God to forgive me, the sin can still have a consequence in my life. So some Christians commit, sometimes commit these sins. If they don't repent, they can lose their salvation. If we truly repent, God will forgive us. So the assurance is that God will forgive us when we repent of our sin. Okay, now, so we just finished uh, talking about the first uh, fruit we talk about here. So next time we'll continue with the next fruits. So today we have talked about, uh, first about the proofs that the Bible is God's Word. And then uh, the proofs from the prophecies, from the, uh, the things in the Bible. In a long time ago, before the scientists discovered those facts, the Bible already talked about scientific facts that modern-day scientists verify to be true. And then we can experience the Holy Spirit. And in Jesus' name, we can cast out demons. And also people have souls. And, uh, and also some people die. They, they can see what happened around them. And then some people go to heaven and some people go to hell. And uh, now some people, there are some story of people, they don't believe in Jesus and they still feel peaceful after they die. Now that's because they don't, haven't come to the point they go to hell yet. They just left the body. They haven't gone to hell yet. Uh, because some people say, uh, if you don't believe in Jesus, you die, you still be very peaceful. That's not true. Some people say that they have experiences that they die and then they 
still feel peaceful because they still haven't gone to uh, taken uh, to hell yet. Okay, and then the next part we talk about the salvation and the fruits of salvation, how we are saved by repentance of our sin and trusting in Jesus as our Savior. But it's more important to talk about how the salvation is accomplished by Jesus dying on the cross, that He's the perfect sacrifice, that He took all our sins, He took the punishment of our sins, He became sin for us, He became cursed for us, so that we can be free from all sins and all curses. And then we are not saved by good works, we are saved by grace through faith, but we are, we are saved to do good. We are saved, we are created in Christ Jesus to do good works. And uh, these are the good works of our Christian life that the Bible has listed. First, we continue to repent of our sins and turn away from the sins and then trust in Jesus as our Savior. This is related to salvation because we do this when we are saved, when we repent and trust in Jesus. And then related to relationship with God, we continue to have a close relationship with God by reading the Bible, by praying to Him and responding to God and loving God. And then related to good works, we obey Him, especially the Great Commission, and then we serve God, uh, that we glorify God in our daily life, and we bless people, that's serving God. Not just the formal serve, uh, serving God, but daily life. When we glorify God, when we love God, when we praise God, and when we tell people about the goodness of God, and help people spiritually, help people to understand God, and help Christians to, uh, to grow in Jesus help Christians in their needs. All these are good works that serving God and God is happy with us, okay? So we'll stop here today. We just talk about, we explain more fully how to turn, repent of our sins and turn away, turn away from our sins. Now these are, you know, good foundation that we build on people. When people have this good foundation, then the, the relationship with God will be uh, will have a firm foundation. They would know the importance of t repentance and turning away from the sins. They are not pushed by guilt. They are not uh, pressure to change. But they see the goodness of God, that they are changed by the goodness of God and the grace of God. So I hope we understand this. And, and you can watch these videos again by getting online. And also uh, I have put this uh, videos uh, in um, Mega online and then you can download them uh, so you can download them and then oh actually I, I put them in a different place I put them in uh, Google Google I, I, I send you the link already but I'll send you again that you can download this and then the people can watch them over and over again and to remember this and to take notes in your language that you can learn to teach people with this teaching so they have firm foundation that the faith is firmly based. It's not just based on experience or based on some tradition, even charismatic tradition, sometimes are not from the Bible. So we want to discern the truth, okay? God bless you. We'll pray now. Oh Lord Jesus, we thank you for your dying for you dying on the cross for us to give us salvation without you dying on the cross we'll have to face eternal punishment we thank you to deliver us from hell that is a great great gift and you also give us a new life you give us a uh, the status to be your children that our life will go higher and higher that we uh, our life will blossom and bless many people and we'll have fruits in our life and we'll have inheritance in you. We thank you, Lord. We want to trust in you and obey you and tell people how good, how good God is and how real He is. And there are many proofs about God. So we can do evan evangelism more effectively. And also we can train people to trust in Jesus and have fruit of salvation. That the faith doesn't just stay there. It's not just stay alone, uh, faith alone, but faith would bear fruit. God bless our spiritual life and bless our ministry and bless our church to give us strength, especially in this time of the coronavirus. Help the churches to st stay strong and grow, oh Lord, and help us to uh, stay healthy and uh, be alert for the virus that we don't mingle 
with people, but we find ways to keep a distance to keep ourselves healthy. Thank you, Lord, for your for your uh, salvation and your help. And we know that this coronavirus is a warning to us that we are getting close to the end time. We are getting close to the end time. We want to be careful. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, God bless you. God be with you. And if you have a question, you can send it here and I will send the answer to you. Okay, if you have questions, you can send to me. God bless you. Okay, God be with you all. Amen. Hallelujah.